Hi, I'm Doug Marks with Metal Method Guitar Lessons. This program is about recording guitar using a digital audio workstation. That's abbreviated as DAW and pronounced DAW. If this stuff already sounds scary or falls under the category of something you will never do in this lifetime, give me a chance to convince you otherwise because this lesson was designed with that attitude in mind. I'll explain using step-by-step -step instructions how to record professional sounding guitar tracks. It's absolutely necessary to record your guitar playing for rapid improvement, and here's why. We all get a little nervous as soon as the recording process begins. I'm included. This sense of uh, excitement and heightened awareness is the ultimate stress test. The recording will reveal your weakness showing what needs to be practiced. Today I'll show you how to relax during this process as much as possible, and this is done by playing along as the track loops. You'll have pass after pass to record it right. All you have to do is play guitar. The recording part, as you'll see, is automatic. This will result in your best tracks ever, and I'll be demonstrating this looping technique today. Modern recording technology is both inexpensive and amazing. In this program, I'm going to show you how to assemble a home recording studio with an entry-level cost of about $100. And that's just for the guitar interface needed to plug into the computer. The software is absolutely free. 30 years ago, similar technology would cost more than $100,000, and in many ways, it was inferior to this program. What I'm explaining today is how to record album quality tracks that can include virtual instruments like bass, drums, keyboards, synths, and strings. Later I'll actually demonstrate exactly what I mean by virtual instruments. I'll also show how to get an incredible guitar sound plugged directly into the computer. No need for an amp or pedals. You don't even need speakers because headphones will work just fine. And this is all included in the free program. The digital audio workstation that we're going to be using is called Cakewalk by BandLab. I'm not affiliated with the company, so I don't get a kickback for any of this. I'm simply a Cakewalk user and have been for over 25 years. Since then, I've paid hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars for the original soft software along with annual updates. Uh, today, it's available for free. There is no catch. It's the full program without ads or limitations. I recently downloaded a free copy and it's better than the previous version that I had purchased. The program is only available for Windows PCs. One of the first things we'll do uh, is I'll show you how to download uh, your copy of the program. I'm doing this lesson to augment my complete guitar course. I'll demonstrate how to bring course backing tracks into the DAW for practice and we'll record the results. Uh, my course can be found at metalmethod.com. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell next to subscribe to receive video notifications. Future programs will include guitar technique, equipment, copying songs, uh, songwriting, uh, software plugins, and recording tips like today. And you don't want to miss any of this, so please subscribe. Ready to get started recording guitar? I thought so. Let's go. Before I begin the instructions for using Cakewalk, here's a brief demonstration of what we're going to accomplish with this program. Now, step-by-step -step instructions will follow this quick demonstration. The blue track is the backing track that includes guitar, bass, and drums from week 22 of my complete guitar course. I imported this audio file into the project. This is how it sounds. Music 
I can loop the entire lead or a section for practicing or recording. Here's a single measure repeated. This is the lead guitar track played with the backing track. What I'm actually recording is the clean guitar. Here's how it sounds with the effects turned off. The beauty of this is, I can choose different tones after the track is recorded. Maybe the guitar is too distorted, no problem. I can change the amp model or effects later. The amp modeling software that I'm using on this track is included with Cakewalk. You can choose from a variety of amps and sounds. This sound that you're listening to right now is an accurate model of a Mesa Boogie dual rectifier. When you woke up this morning, bet you didn't think that you would own a dual rectifier today. Not only that, you have access to the sounds of Fender, Marshall, and many other amps. This is all included with Cakewalk. You can create your own track icons or use the included library of icons. I'm not explaining how to use virtual instruments today, but I want you to be aware that they're included with Cakewalk. The software features virtual strings, keyboards, synthesizers, bass, and drums. Here's how the drums sound. And here's the bass. To plug a guitar into the computer, an audio interface is necessary. The Focusrite Scarlet Solo is the entry-level audio interface that I recommend. It currently sells for $109 on Amazon. Before plugging the unit into the computer, follow the manufacturer's instructions to install the drivers. It won't work without the drivers. And don't worry, the installation is simple. This is the microphone input. Above it is the channel gain, which controls volume. The 48V is phantom power for a condenser microphone. Next is the quarter inch input for guitar and other instruments. Above that is the channel gain. To adjust the gain for guitar, Play notes and chords at the loudest volume you'll be using. Adjust the gain clockwise until it turns red as pictured. Then turn it slightly counterclockwise until you no longer see flashes of red. For the guitar to drive an amp model properly, it must be as loud as possible without clipping. The red indicates clipping. Next to that is the monitor knob, which controls the volume of the studio speakers. You may initially just monitor through headphones. This is the back of the interface. On the left is the USB output to the computer. On the right are the line outputs that can be used for powered speakers. Now is the moment we've been waiting for. Here's how to download and install Cakewalk. Google the phrase Cakewalk by BandLab. Click on the link at the top of the page. Click on download. You'll be directed to another page. Select download once again. Read and follow the four simple steps of instructions. The first step is to install the assistant. If you're browsing with Chrome, click on BandLab Assistant at the bottom of the browser after it's downloaded. Otherwise, look in the download folder. Here are the four steps. Download the Assistant. Two, click on the downloaded file. Three, sign up for a BandLab account. 
When that's completed, click on the Apps tab at the top of the Assistant window, and finally, click on Install. When the installation is completed, there will be a cakewalk icon on your desktop. Double click on the icon to begin the journey. As already mentioned, your audio interface and drivers must be installed for the software to function. Click on basic.cwt. This is the default tempo setting. Click in this window to change the tempo to 110 to match the tempo of our demonstration project. On your computer's keyboard, press P to open the Preferences window. Select Devices. The installation program should have already selected the input and output drivers for your audio interface. If not, select them now. Next, select Driver Settings. The sampling rate should be 44,100. If not, select 44,100 from the drop-down window. Select Playback and Recording. This should say ACO. If not, select ACO from the drop-down menu. Under File, select Folder Locations. I have chosen different paths for these folders, so it was necessary to define the new locations here. For now, you don't need to do anything. Just remember that the path to these folders can be found here. Next, select VST settings. VST is the interface that allows software synthesizers and effect plugins to communicate with Cakewalk. You don't need to do anything here unless you've already purchased or installed audio plugins that use VST. If so, add the new path here. Ideally, you should create a single folder and put all VST plugins into that folder. Now, this falls under the category as do as I say, not as I do, because as you can see here, I have quite a mess. There are no MIDI tracks in this project, so I'll delete the MIDI track. Right click and select Delete Track. This is called the Playhead. The project plays and records at this point. Notice when it stops, it automatically jumps back to the starting point. I find this to be inconvenient. To change this, go to Options, remove the check from On Stop Rewind to Now Marker. Now the playhead remains where it is when stopped. Click on the plus sign to add an audio or instrument track. Audio is already selected. Click on Create to add an audio track. Click in the Track Name window to label this as Backing Track and this to Guitar. Right click here and select Load Track Icons. These folders include standard icons. I created a couple of custom icons that I'll select. Let's set up the guitar track. This drop-down menu is used to select the input for the guitar. My audio interface has 16 inputs, but only four that can be used with a quarter-inch jack for guitar. My guitar is plugged into number three, so I'll select that input. You may find a combination of stereo and mono inputs on your audio interface. Typically, you'll only use mono for guitar. For the output, select Master if it's not already selected. The Master is typically configured to use Output 1 stereo. This probably doesn't need to be touched. There's a good chance that the only adjustment you'll need to make for the input and output is to be sure the guitar is using a mono input. If this is configured properly, turn the echo on to hear the clean guitar tone. If the interface appears to be responding to your guitar and there's no sound, welcome to the club. Uh, the input or output may be incorrectly configured 
or you don't have speakers hooked up or turned on. If that's the problem, use headphones. Now I'll import the backing track from week 22 of my guitar lessons. I locate the file, click and hold the left mouse button to place it in the track. Here's a handy trick. In the View drop-down menu, select Auto Track Zoom. This automatically zooms the selected track so you can see it in detail. The backing track is zoomed. Now the guitar track is zoomed. It took me years to find this feature, and you've already mastered it. To play the backing track, simply position the playhead and press play. If you wish to enlarge the track, click and hold the left mouse button on the bottom of the track to resize. Next, click and hold the left mouse button while the cursor is on the playhead. Drag the mouse up to zoom out, drag down to zoom in. While continuing to hold, move left and right to view different areas of the track. I'm going to quickly show you how to use the Smart Tool. Don't bother taking notes on this because I've included notes in the download material available at metalmethod.com forward slash download. Select the Smart Tool from the Tools module. A single left mouse button click in the Time Ruler positions the playhead. It also opens instructions in the Help module. Double click in the time ruler to play. You can also press the space bar to begin and end play. That's normally how I do it. Hold down the Alt key and click the left mouse button to create a split. Move the cursor to the very top of the clip. Hold down the left mouse button to drag the clip. Right click, edit, select delete. To restore the part, click the left mouse button and drag the edge of the clip. One other trick, you can fade in or out by positioning the mouse near the top of the clip. Hold the left mouse button down and select the amount of fade you want. Next, I'm going to align the track correctly to the measures. There is a snap function that can be selected to only place items exactly on a time increment like 16th notes, quarter notes, whole notes, half notes. They won't go in between. They will only be attached to whatever you select. We don't want to use that because it will interfere with a precise placement, which is what we need right now. I don't want this to jump to the nearest quarter note, for example. This turns snap on and off. Now it's off. The song doesn't need to start at the beginning of the first measure. Instead, I'll begin at the second measure. Now we'll drag the top of the clip to align it to the beginning of the second measure. I'll zoom in at the beginning. Find the transit, which is the audio spike, and move the track until it lines up perfectly. Since we entered the correct tempo, all of the measures are now perfectly aligned. Click on Views, Console. This will reveal the console. Here are the faders used to control track volume. Individual tracks are controlled on the left side of the console. The master is on the right side. It's used to raise or lower the volume of the entire project. To hide or reveal the console, position the cursor at the edge, click and hold, then move the edge like a window shade. It can be difficult to find the edge. It's time to insert effects on the guitar track. Click on Plugins, find the Guitar Folder, drag and drop TH3 into Effects.
For this demonstration, I'm selecting TH3 Building Blocks Dirt. And I'm using the preset Modern Classic Dirt, which is modeled after a Mesa Boogie dual rectifier. Click Load, then close the window. All effects can be opened by double clicking on the effect. Here's how the AMP modeling software sounds. There's another method for adding effects. Uh, click on the plus sign, select Insert Audio Effects, add the Sonitis Reverb. Here's the control to the reverb level. There are several presets to choose from. Reverb is always inserted after the amplifier. Be sure the gain control on the audio interface is as loud as possible without clipping. Otherwise, the amp isn't driven properly. My guitar is noisy, so I'll insert a noise gate. In the Dynamics folder is the Sonitis gate. This is to be inserted before the amp. I'll turn the noise gate on and off so you can hear the difference it makes. It's on, off, on, off. The order of effects is guitar, then noise gate. You'll also put distortion and overdrive pedals before the amp. Next is the amp modeling software. And last, reverb, digital delays, and chorus. Noise gate, distortion, and overdrive pedals are before the amp. Other effects are generally after the amp. The modules over top of the tracks are included in the basic workspace. There are workspaces available for different phases of your project. For example, the record workspace includes all the modules you'll need for recording and it includes the console properly positioned. If you need access to a module that's not in the workspace, right click in this area and select the module that you need. You can save a custom workspace as new to access later. Download this project at metalmethod.com forward slash download. That way you can perform each task as I'm explaining it. Okay, it's time to record the lead guitar track. I want the track to loop so I can record several takes and keep the best. Hold down the left mouse button and drag over the section that is to be repeated. Release the mouse button at the end. Click this icon in the loop module to set loop points for the highlighted area. The yellow line indicates the area to be looped. Drag the mouse to select the area to be recorded. The guitar part starts here and ends here. Click on the punch module to select the in and out points. The red line indicates the area that will be recorded. Next, arm the track, turn echo on, Notice when I press the record button that it turns red at the beginning of the area to be recorded. I'll grab my guitar and we'll get started.
click the comp button to gain access to the recorded tracks. I played through the part a few times. You can check out each take by muting all tracks, then soloing each individually. Tracks are deleted by clicking on the X. If you save a take or two and continue recording, you must mute all previous tracks or you'll hear them along with the take that you're recording, which is really, really annoying. If there's a part of the lead that I would like to redo, I can turn off the loop and record modules. Then drag the mouse over the area to be punched in. Set the in and out points. Next, I decide how much to loop. Generally, I start to loop a measure or two before the recording. The punch in and out will be automatic. I'll open the tracks to select the best take, mute all three, solo and audition each individually. I like the first one and will delete the second and third. There is a very handy technique called comping that allows us to easily compare the three recordings and insert the best part with little effort. But that's for another day. <laughs> ah, this is the end of the lesson. You now have all the tools needed to make great recordings. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have questions or suggestions, I would love to hear from you in the comments. I'll see you on the next video.